All right, so I acquired this transmission thing from my friendly neighborhood auto mechanic. And I'm sure there's some good steel in here for a chopping blade. And then we've got all this aluminum. So first I'm gonna just knock off some of this aluminum to save for later in the process. Good chunk. Well, I need to make sure there's no fluid in here. I don't want to make a mess opening this up. Nope. Okay, it looks like we're good there. I don't need that in there. I'm guessing this is probably actually called a torque converter or something. If you guys know, just put it in the comments. All right, this is looking pretty interesting. So. Looks like we're going to have a very, various different options for some blade material. Obviously, we've got a shaft running through here. And then we've got this uh, chain. That would make some cool pattern welded stuff all on its own. I might save that for another project. And then we've got these, uh, these uh, gears. Or what the right word is for that, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway. Those, will, those are decent steel too, I'm sure. So we just gotta keep taking this thing apart and get down to the, to the steel. Okay, I'm gonna try to take this snap ring out here with, now these, these are way too small for that. I have to use. All right guys, we've run into our first hiccup and it's a pretty major hiccup because if you were looking closely when I was using that cutoff wheel on the body of this torque converter or whatever it is, you'll notice that it would, there was some uh, bright flames there. And remember how I mentioned that it felt really light? Well, it's because it's not aluminum. It's in fact magnesium. Uh, aluminum does not ignite when, it, when you uh, heat it up, at least not to any appreciable temperature. Magnesium does, and I believe magnesium is lighter than aluminum. And so, my plan was to melt down pieces of the body of this torque converter transmission deal and uh, cast a handle around the tang of our blade. That's not gonna be possible because you need an inert atmosphere to melt and cast magnesium because if it comes in contact with oxygen, obviously, it's gonna combust. And so this little bitty piece of magnesium is probably too big actually, that I just that I just knocked off with the hammer during uh, the demo there. Let's, let's make that smaller.
All right, I'm gonna have to prove my uh, point here a different way. Well, apparently magnesium ignites at about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, so once it lights, it burns super hot, and I'm not gonna mess with that. So let's look at our options for what we can make a blade out of in, in this. So we've got some of the shaft here, which is at least partially hollow. That's uh, a little problematic. And then we've got various bits and pieces of this uh, assembly here with decent sized pieces of steel that we can uh, turn into flat pieces that can be forge welded together into a blade. And so I think that's going to be kind of the combination of what we do here. Alright, so I've got these pieces to where I can forge them out flat and dress them up some more. Same with this. And then I've got all these thin pieces from the, uh, the torque converter, I guess. So I'm going to put these together, clamp them up, and run a couple of weld beads so they they're held together and then I can cut it into four pieces and stack it up into something we can forge weld together. Alright guys, I'm going to explain to you what's going on here, what I'm seeing, and I think this is some kind of sintered piece. I believe it's steel. I'm, I'm kind of doubtful of that even, to be honest. But at the very least, it's acting really weird. So I had it all cleaned off, and uh, as I was welding it and it was getting hot, oil starts coming out of nowhere. This is acting as if it's porous and it's like got oil soaked into it, which, you know, is not out of the realm of possibility if it's some kind of sintered piece that's porous. Sintering, of course, being where you have tiny metal particles that you compact, compress at a high heat into a part like this and essentially, you know, forge weld those steel particles together into a usable form and as I remember, in some cases, it is, in fact, or intentionally even, uh, porous for the purpose of lubrication. And I believe that might be what's going on here. Um, I will say, though, that I am not comfortable putting this in a forge and trying to forge weld it. If it didn't just uh, melt, if it's not actually steel, um, all this oil is coming out of it, and that's uh, not something I want to really mess with. So our options are getting slimmer and slimmer as we go through this. But what do we have left? Well, we have the actual bearing, this ball bearing right here, which I'm pretty sure that's a decent steel. It's not a lot, though. Then we have these pieces here, and I believe they're of the same make as that uh, disc down there. Well, I've made knives from bearings before, and maybe we will on this one later. But uh, to do something new, it looks like it's going to have to be the chain, the drive chain off of this uh, torque converter deal. And I was thinking about saving it for another project, but I guess that's going to be, it is going to be the project. I'm uh, going to have to do a little bit of a detour from what I originally intended for this 
without knowing all the details before jumping in. So let's press on. All right, so I've got two pieces of this chain belt thing and I've cut out the uh, bridges on these pieces here where it bridged across there. And so that way it can actually fit together like this. And now this is about an inch wide on both dimensions. I think I can just build a canister with some uh, inch wide flat bar, flat stock that I have. gonna go ahead and heat treat this little blade what's left of our efforts so far on this project but there's just there's just some inclusions that are too deep that there's not gonna be enough steel left once we get them all the way out and I really think that's due to the fact that I started with a extremely porous billet you know and I thought I could get all those voids out just forging that down and maybe in theory you could but uh, it would require more forging so I'm going to grind this a little finer here and put it in some acid, some ferric chloride, and see what the pattern looks like. But I don't feel like we really did this justice. And so I've went ahead and prepped another billet like the one we just did. But this time I'm going to clean off the, uh, the, the chain with acetone to get it really clean. And we're going to fill it up with powdered steel. And that should take care of all the voids when we go to forge weld it together. It should give us a nice solid piece of steel. And then we can go ahead and uh, do the twist on it. And I think it's going to make a really cool pattern. So let's see what this looks like. And then we'll proceed and try to do the best we can do with this, uh, this project and finish it out. Look at that. It appears we forge welded a piece of grit into, into the steel. Okay, there's a quick etch on this. It's really not that impressive, but the reason is, I believe, because you can't ex distinguish between what is actually a bunch of different layers. I mean, all these pieces in there are separate, and I think what you're seeing here, the darker color, I think that's the pins. And so adding powdered steel is definitely going to 
make a better pattern. So let's do that. Turns out there was a solidly forge welded piece of steel down inside that billet and we finally got to it. Well, I did a little extra grinding I suppose, but we have a nice little letter opener here. Not quite what I intended to build starting out on this project, but it is a blade and it will serve a purpose. I want to see what the pattern is, so hit that like button and subscribe, notifications, let's get this in some ferric chloride and see what kind of a pattern we can achieve from the guts of a torque converter. Alright guys, there it is. I'm going to show you pictures of it in just a second. Thanks for watching this video, coming along on this little uh, experimental project. If you're interested in a high quality blade with actual quality blade materials, you can hop over to my website, firecreekforge.com, and I have a selection of completely handmade heirloom quality knives and stuff there for you. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you.